And I want to thank our witnesses for being here today. And, and Mr. Brady, I, Chairman Brady, I, you know, I used to be a student of medical irony, and I feel like I've branched out now into legislative irony. I mean, you and I were on the Joint Economic Committee <laughs> several years ago. We received those jobs numbers on the first Friday of every month until, of course, uh, Democrats were in charge at that time, and then they actually stopped having those hearings where uh, Keith Hall from the Department Bureau of Labor Statistics, Department of Labor, would come in and share with us the, the grim results of what the previous month's employment had been. I remember those hearings with Christina Romer and, and Larry Summers, and uh, just the dark clouds were just ahead as far as any I could see, and there was no hope that things would ever be any better. I mean, those were some of the most depressing hearings that I've that I've ever encountered. And then, you know, I, I'm willing to admit that perhaps things had started to improve before current administration, President Trump, took office. But I got to tell you, I went back and reviewed my 401k statement from 2015. And it wasn't a pretty picture. I reviewed it from 2017, and it was a significant and marked improvement. Now, I recognize the markets had some volatility, and that this year perhaps may not turn out to be as, as robust as last year was, but that stark difference from the last full year of the Obama administration for the first full year of the Trump administration, 2015, 2017, if people still have their 401k statements in their shoeboxes and their closets, pull those out and look at those. If you have a question in your mind as to whether things really were okay economically during the, even the last years of the Obama administration, it was not okay. It was 2% growth. We were told this is the new normal. Get used to it. It will never be any better. And, uh, Mr. Chairman, I... Your comments about the people in the middle class, I mean, it used to be people ran their elections on, we want to take care of the middle class, we want to, we want to build up the middle class. Well, the last two years, this administration has done just that. The middle class is doing mighty well. Now, I am concerned because when I turn on the cable television and I listen to all the talking heads, people who are a lot smarter than economic things than I am, We'll talk about, just as we heard from the other side of the dais, that there is, there is now a, we are on the cusp of an economic downturn. It's almost as if they are willing and wanting that to happen so that then they can point to President Trump, say, see, he didn't really know how to make the economy better for you, and now it's getting worse. But they're trying to talk down the economy. I can remember when George W. Bush first took office in March of 2001, and he made mention of the fact that it seemed like the economy was a little shaky, and Tom Daschle and all of these folks jumped on him and said, don't talk down the economy, for heaven's sakes, you'll spook investors, and, and the market will come down. And it will be a self-fulfilling prophecy. And I'm telling you, I cannot turn on the television now without hearing some smart person talk about this is the end of this economic expansion. Well, nonsense. Nonsense. The only reason that should happen is if we turn away from things that have actually delivered this economic revival to this country and, in fact, rebuilt the middle class. And we should be rejoicing on that. Look, Congressional Budget Office, no secret, I've had my beef with them this past two years. Where is the Congressional Budget Office figure on the, in the number of people who are covered by employer-sponsored insurance and ERISA plan today that weren't covered two years ago? If the economy has added two and a half million jobs, in my limited way of thinking about things, those are two and a half million people that may have the availability of employer-sponsored insurance. And if they're a family where there is a spouse or perhaps a child who might be covered under that policy, what, that could be two and a half to five million people who now have coverage who did not have it under the Obama economy. That should be something to celebrate. We should be grateful for that, unless you really want 
only the government to be in charge of your health care, and you don't want people to be in charge of their own health care, and you, you certainly don't want them to get it from their employer. I don't even understand why someone would make that kind of an argument. It seems counter to everything that, uh, that certainly I've been, uh, been taught. But the concept of people talking down the economy to hurt this administration is one that it bothers me significantly. And it bothers me because, like you, I sat in that Joint Economic Committee. I heard those dire warnings from Christina Romer and Larry Summers and all the smart people that President Obama had <laughs> gathered around him, and they weren't able to figure it out. We had a stimulus, but it didn't work. We probably need another one, and it needs to be bigger. Well, here we are now, two years into this Trump administration, and the sunshine has been shining, and it is, it is. It's, look, I've served when there's a bad economy and a good economy, and I know this purely, I'm not a, not schooled in political science. I was schooled in the biological sciences, but I do know this. I look a lot smarter if there's a good economy, and that's what I want. So I thank you, Mr. Brady, for the work you did on the tax reform. I am grateful that you're bringing this for us, before us today. Can I just ask you a question on uh, the, uh, what you refer to as the Cadillac tax? And I, I see the uh, um, Section 302 in the bill that you've got before us. And really, we're, just, we're not getting rid of it. We're just delaying yeah, it. Delaying it. So the medical device tax delayed five years. The um, health insurance tax, two-year delay. And then the Cadillac tax, which punishes, punishes workers who get good health care at work. Well, One you, of the, you, pre you, 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 you yeah. anticipated my question. Duh, um, is being delayed in a year which Republicans, Democrats have long agreed. And would you articulate, just if, in case anyone is watching this and doesn't understand what a, what a Cadillac tax is, is that you're going to tax my car? No, we're going to tax your health insurance benefit if it's too generous. We is will that punish the business if they give you health care that the government says is too good for you. And not only that, the health insurance tax adds another tax to you, whether you're in wherever you get your health insurance. That raises premiums 4 to 5 percent. So in this bill, we are making health care more affordable for workers and for families, regardless of whether they get their health care. And let me just add one other thing on, the, on, the, on people who get their insurance through their employment through an ERISA plan. I heard pre-existing conditions mentioned. Under an ERISA plan, exclusion for pre-existing <laughs> conditions. Once a person is through the probationary part of their employment, they receive their insurance coverage regardless of previous health history. And that is not from the Affordable Care Act. That is from a group of laws called ERISA from 1972 or 1974. I think it was Senator Javits in New York, a Republican. But that protection on pre-existing conditions, if we expand the employer-sponsored pool, we are, in fact, protecting more people against being, uh, uh, being charged an additional penalty for a pre-existing condition. And I think that's a good thing. It's something we should celebrate. So, again, thank you for bringing thank this you, bill. And, and uh, I think we need to do everything we can not to damage the economy but to encourage encourage the economy and encourage the American worker because, after all, they're the ones who've, who've actually brought us this prosperity. It hadn't been us, it hadn't been the president, it's been the American worker. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll yield back. Dr. Burgess, thank you very much, Professor Burgess. Um,